What we're going to do with this vodcast is just go through the problems from your practice worksheet 9A, and this goes over Hess's law um, using formation data, uh, enthalpies of formation data, and enthalpies of combustion data. So you should have your worksheet ready with you, and as we go through this, you can follow along, pause the vodcast when you need to, rewind it. Um, and then ask questions when either on the forum or in class. So let's get started and just work our way um, through these problems. Let me just, okay, I just wanted to check to make sure I see the subscripts aren't written as subscripts here. I just wanted to make sure they were in the remaining problems. Um, all right, I'm just going to work through these problems. So if you if you want an introduction to this, look at the introduction vodcast that I first posted. All right, the first problem says calculate the enthalpy change in the reaction below given the data in kilojoules per mole and the heats of formation of the following compounds. So you're given the heats of formation. So remember, when we're trying to find delta H of the reaction, there is a number of ways of going about do that, and, and the easiest way is taking the summation of the delta H of formation of the products minus the summation of delta H, delta H of formation of the reactants. So if you have your formation data for the compounds in the reaction, the problem is pretty simple. We'll take four times our formation data for NO, which we have as positive 91 and it's kilojoules and I'm not going to write all of the units plus six times our formation data for our water and our water is negative 286 kilojoules so what we're going to do is take that sum and then minus the sum of the reactants and our reactant is ammonia and we have our coefficient of four times the ammonia data which is negative 45.5 and actually uh, okay so anyway uh, if you remember our formation data for compounds in their natural states are zero so anytime you have an element or a diatomic if that's the state that it's found in its formation data is zero so when you do the math here you should get negative 1170 and then the unit is kilojoules per mole and that's going to represent the enthalpy of the reaction. Alright, let's take a look at the second problem. It says consider the formation of propane. Let me get a pen here. Um, given the following, del that should be a delta H. Delta H for the reaction so we're trying to calculate delta H for this reaction. Now that reaction represents the formation of C2H6 and what you can see here is we're given various delta H values and we've got the combustion of C2H6, the combustion of carbon, and the combustion of H2. Now remember when we're calculating delta H values for compounds that is based on one mole of the compound. So these reactions here, this one and this one, you're given a twist. You're given four moles and two moles. So we're going to we're going to need to divide that value by four and that value by two to get these values for one mole. All right. So what we want to do is solve for the formation of C2H6. So if we write our combustion reaction here, 4C2H6 plus 14O2 yields 8CO2s plus 12H2Os, the first thing I'm going to do here is divide all of these by 4. So that's going to cancel out. I'm going to get 3 halves O2. I'm going to get two CO2s and three H2Os. That's going to allow me to divide my enthalpy value by four also, and then that's going to give me negative 1,500 
and 60 kilojoules. Again, we do that because we want our combustion of one mole of the compound here. Okay, so anyway, remember these values here are formation values. So if we're given the delta H for this reaction, that represents the whole reaction. So we can set our problem up negative 1560 is equal to the summation of our products minus the summation of our reactants. So again, as we talked about in the previous vodcast, even though that's combustion data for carbon, it also represents the formation of CO2. So when we go to put in the value for CO2, we can use that value. Remember our coefficient of 2, so 2 times negative 394, and that's in kilojoules, plus 3 times, again, our value for water, we want it to represent 1 mole. So we're dividing that value by 2, and that's going to give us negative 286. So that's the value that we can use for water in our equation. And that's our products. Now in this problem, what we're looking for, or to actually to solve this equation, what we need is the formation of, of the C2H6, which we don't have, and we're going to call that X. And that's what we're looking for in the original problem. So when we solve for X here, that will give us the formation of C2H6. So when we solve the problem there, we're going to get negative 86 kilojoules per mole. It says, consider the enthalpy change calculated in A. Does this represent the standard uh, enthalpy of formation of ethane? That's exactly what it represents, and that is what we calculated. Let's take a look at the next problem. It says, calculate the standard enthalpy of formation of benzene, which is C6H6. So what we're looking for is carbon plus hydrogen yielding the C6H6. And again, we would balance that based on one mole of our compound, so we would balance it like that. Okay, now we're given enthalpies of combustion for the C6H6, the carbon, and the hydrogen. Whoops, where'd my pen go? The carbon and the hydrogen. So if we write out our combustion reaction for the C6H6, Again, it's the same format. If we knew the formation values for these and our overall delta H value, we could solve for the unknown. So we're looking for the formation of that, and we're given that the combustion of this reaction is negative 3273, so that's going to be our value for the whole reaction, My, or is equal to, is equal to the summation all right, had some issues with my pen there. That's going to be equal to the summation of the products and reactants. So let's make sure that we balance our equation here. We've got 6 and 3 and then 15 halves. So we're going to have 6 times our car carbon dioxide data. And again, we're going to get that from here. Remember, the carbon plus the oxygen yields the carbon dioxide, so that's going to allow us to calculate that form, or I should say that value is also going to represent the formation. So you're going to start to see the pattern with these problems. If you have the combustion for carbon, you get the formation of carbon dioxide. And if you get the combustion of hydrogen, you get the formation of water, which is negative 285. But as we talked about, don't just memorize that procedure. Understand why you can use combustion data to find formation data. And again, we don't know what the value of our C6H6 is, and our oxygen value is zero. And when we solve for X there, we are going to get 555 kilojoules per mole. Just be careful with this one because a lot of people seem to be getting um, a negative answer when you should be getting a positive answer. So just make sure you're checking your negatives. All right, let's go through number four. Again, it's the same sort of, sort of problem. We're calculating the formation of C6H11OH. So you are given combustion data for the C611OH. So let's write that 
C6, H11, OH plus O2 yields carbon dioxide and water. When we balance that, we're going to need 17 halves, 6 carbon dioxides, and 6 waters. So again, we want the formation data of carbon dioxide and water, and since we're given the combustion data of carbon and hydrogen, we already have that. We're given the value, the delta H value for this whole reaction, so we set it up the same way. We have negative 3,727 kilojoules is equal to 6 times our negative 393, whoops, 0.5, plus 6 times negative 285.5 minus our formation of C611OH, which we don't know, and oxygen again is 0. So when we solve for x there, we should get negative 347, and again, that's kilojoules per mole. Let's take a look at the next problem. All right, now we have the standard enthalpy of formation of C4H6. So now, if you, if you notice, we're given the enthalpy of formation for the C4H6. And we want to calculate the enthalpy of combustion for this compound. So what we're calculating, C4H6 undergoing combustion, CO2 plus H2O, when we go to balance this, we're going to have 11 halves, 4, and 3. So what we're trying to do is calculate the delta H value for this whole reaction taking place. The previous problems, we were given that value, and then we were calculating the formation of our hydrocarbon, but now we're calculating that whole value. And we're given the formation value for the hydrocarbon. We know the formation value for water, or I'm sorry, for carbon dioxide, and we know the formation value for the water, so this problem is pretty simple. We're solving for x here now, and the summation of our products is 4 times negative 393.5 plus 3 times negative 285.5 minus our one and only reactant, because remember, oxygen is zero. So when we solve for x there, we are going to wind up with negative 2,542.5 kilojoules. So again, we're solving for the reaction given the formation data of all the compounds. All right, let's take a look at the last one here. It says calculate the formation of C4H10 from combustion data and the combustion of butane. So we have our reaction C4H10 plus oxygen yielding carbon dioxide and water. And by now, this should be almost becoming routine. We have our carbon dioxide data, our water data, and again, this is the, the combustion data for the, uh, the butane. So that's going to be the negative 2,800 77 is equal to, let's not forget to balance this, so what do we have there, 13, that can't be right, so what do we have, 4 and 5 and, so we have, whoop, missed my pen, so we have 13 halves, so fill in our data, 4, negative 393.5 plus Coefficient 5, negative 285.5, minus x. So when we solve for x now, we get negative 124.5 kilojoules. And again, that's per mole. So again, you just want to make sure that when you're doing these problems, you're understanding when you have combustion data, why you can use it as formation data also, as long as the equations are the same. And you want to understand when you have, the, when you're calculating enthalpies of formation versus, say, enthalpies of combustion. 
Um, anyway, quest if you have any questions, make sure to post them either on the forum site where this will be posted or ask them in class. And I hope this helps.